Today we'll tell and show you how to build the best budget gaming PC in 2020 for 600 bucks. If you think that it's impossible to create a good cheap PC for games, then you are very much mistaken. It's definitely not. We're well aware of the fact that choosing the best components to build a gaming PC can really be difficult if you don't keep your finger on the pulse of an every evolving market where new models are seemingly released every 5 seconds. Fortunately, there are crazy people like us who do this stuff and who find it fun to keep up with every little latest breakthrough in gaming and graphics technology. We've got some amazing components led by the fresh Ryzen 3 3100, which being just a quad-core processor really surprised us. Later we'll conduct performance tests and real games and you understand that this guy is impossible to ignore. But I'll do the time and at the beginning we'll introduce all the components that we've chosen for you and of course start with the processor. So we unpack this brand new box and inside we see a standard set. This is a simple processor from AMD that uses an AM4 socket and a standard low profile Wraith Stealth Cooler. It comes with pre-applied thermal paste on the radiator, which will save us a couple of dollars. The Ryzen 3 3100 has 4 cores and 8 threads running on a 3.6 GHz base clock with a tuba boost of up to 3.9. Also, this guy is unlocked for overclocking and has 18 megabytes of game cache. At its price of about 110 bucks, it is only slightly behind the rather expensive Ryzen 5 3600. So the Ryzen 3 3100 is the best budget CPU for games in 2020. Of course, everyone's favorite Ryzen 5 1600F is not completely outdated. It can boast of its two additional cores for better multitasking and is quite a bit behind the Ryzen 3 3100 in terms of frames per second in games. Due to the popularity these days, the 1600F is unfortunately much more expensive than its original price of $85. Of course, you don't have to buy it for $110 plus, but at the right price, it is still a good choice. So, as you can see, Ryzen 3 3100 simply has no competitors. We've chosen the perfect motherboard for a budget PC. This is the B450M DS3H from Gigabyte. Let's have a look what's inside. We see a standard set of two cables and the motherboard itself. It's made in the Micro ATX form factor equipped with 4 RAM slots with a maximum capacity of 64 GB, 2 PCI slots for video cards and 1 M.2 connector for installing high-speed SSD drives. The sound subsystem uses the long-familiar Realtek ALC887. The back panel has 4 USB 2 and USB 3 ports, the fun retro PS2 connector for mouse and keyboard, several 3.5mm audio ports, an Ethernet RG45, HDMI and DVI video output. Puts. This motherboard is not designed for overclocking powerful processors and in general these things for overclocking are very modest. It is worth saying again that this motherboard belongs to the budget level so it doesn't make sense to expect much variety and miracles from it. In the future, you'll be able to put more RAM and easily cope with professional tasks. At its price, this is the best motherboard for a budget build of a gaming PC. As for the RAM, we've chosen the 16GB kit from Crucial Ballistics running on a 3000MHz clock with CL16 timings. AMD CPUs love fast and efficient memory and this is the best memory from Crucial that you can find at an affordable price. Our motherboard will allow us to overclock the RAM, which will especially appeal to our Ryzen. We recommend to take the BX500 SSD from Crucial with 120GB. This is a great budget SSD that will allow your Windows to work just like lightning. Well, as a partner to our SSD, we've chosen the time-tested HDD WD Blue. All your games will feel very cool with it. And this budget guy will fit perfectly into our build. As a video card, we've taken the GTX 1650 Super from Gigabyte. We believe that the best solution is to choose the version with a single fan, because this card is quite cold. Just look at it. This baby looks pretty enough, it has a small radiator and only one fan, but this is enough for cooling. This card is built on the latest Turin architecture and has 4 GB of GDDR6 memory, so it has excellent performance in games. On the back we see one HDMI, one Display Port, and one DVI-D. We can simultaneously connect up to three monitors to the video card. Imagine that. This graphics card is the best budget solution at a reasonable price. It will perfectly cope with all AAA titles at a full HD resolution. As for the power supply, we're going to use a very expensive Focus Plus from Seasonic. 
This is a very good product, but it's definitely not suitable for a budget build. The fact is that we didn't have time to buy the budget power supply we had needed, and therefore we'll use this one. We recommend you to buy FSP 500 watt. It's not expensive and doesn't look very presentable, but it doesn't matter because the most important thing is that it's assembled from high quality components and will perfectly fit into our budget PC. We've got the cheapest case that we could find, and this is the Nox Hammer Spark. It's very light and the side window is made of plastic. In addition, the power supply is located in the upper part of the case. To be honest, buying an expensive case with tempered glass and RGB fans to build a PC that costs only 600 bucks is a very strange idea. We do not recommend you to take such a case. The choice of the case is a matter of tastes, and everyone's tastes are different, so it's best to look for a case by yourself. You can even choose the cheapest one. It is desirable that the power supply is located in the lower part of the case. You can buy a regular case for about 30 bucks. The links to all the components from this video in the description. It's time to build our monster because we can't wait to start testing and find out how many FPS our components will show. According to the old proven scheme we build the platform. We take our motherboard and carefully put it on the box, then open the socket, synchronize the triangle on the CPU and the board, then install our processor and close the socket. The next step is to install our cooler. The most effective way to do this is to tighten the bolts crosswise to distribute the load evenly, like this. Now take the RAM and carefully insert it into the first and third slot so that you can hear clicks. This will allow you to work in two-channel mode. It is the time for the power supply. We take out four bolts, install the power supply, and it's done. Next, we install our drives. Take the hard drive and secure it with two bolts, which we also took out of a small bag. And now is the most important moment. We'll install the motherboard. First, we break off two metal plates from the case, and since the metal is thin, it is very easy to do. We had to add two legs like this to mount the motherboard. Now everything is ready, and we just install the motherboard into the case and tighten the bolts. Then we connect all the power cables, connect the front control panel of the case, and of course do the cable management to give our computer a noble appearance. Then we install the video card in the PCI slot until it clicks, then secure it with a bolt in the case and connect the power. Now our PC is fully ready for launch and testing. To make the test more interesting, we put together exactly the same PC configuration, only with an Intel Core i3-9100F in comparison. Let's get started. Cinebench is specifically designed to demonstrate the performance potential of processors. Ryzen 3 3100 shows 2300 points, defeating Intel Core i3-9100F, which shows only 1550 points. But keep in mind that i3-9100F has only 4 cores and 4 threads, and the budget Ryzen 3 3100 has 4 cores and 8 threads. Next, we launch 3 dmark Time Spy, the best benchmark on the DirectX 12 engine. Our PC shows 4873 points. This is a great result for a build designed for Full HD gaming. It's high time to play. We've tested all the games in 1080p with optimal graphics settings and set by GeForce Experience. We also want to know that all the games are captured by Shadowplay. Tom Clancy's The Division is certainly not the most demanding game, but we were pleasantly surprised by by the results. You can see all the settings on your screens right now. We specially prepared these charts to make it easier for you to follow the results, which are very similar in this particular game. Ok guys, let's try to run a more demanding game. Metro Exodus is a very demanding game. We've launched a built-in benchmark on high graphic settings. Our Ryzen 3 3100 of course worked much more stable due to the hyper trading, but still i3-9100F has shown a decent result. Yes, it's nice that even in such a complex game, 3100 doesn't load full 100%. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this game we've chosen optimal graphic settings and of course full HD resolution. The game is very demanding on the processor and both of our CPUs were loaded to 100%. Our good Ryzen has overtaken Intel. Battlefield 5 and high graphic settings. We can see that the Intel 9100F is fully loaded 100%, which is not true for Ryzen 3 3100. This has a potential due to hyperthreading, so it shows a smoother image and fewer lags. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is everyone's favorite competitive game. We launched an internal benchmark and decided to stop testing the i3 CPU. We think that you have already understood everything. On average, our PC has shown more than 250 FPS, and this is of course a very good result. 
next, Fortnite. We launched this battle royal and selected the epic graphic settings. And on the frame time graph you can notice a quite large number of flags. Apparently this is influenced by both game optimization and recording with shadow play. Our favorite racing game, Forza Horizon 4. It ran the built-in benchmark with optimal graphic settings. Our PC has shown more than 70 FPS and driving in such smooth conditions is a great pleasure. PUBG is a very popular game. Of course we launched the Battle Royal. We're pleasantly surprised because it works much smoother than Fortnite and with average graphic settings you can compete in this game. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a really Yes, a really heavy game designed for performance monsters. In this game our PC gave us a decent result. It showed us 59 frames per second. Surprisingly, the minimum result was 47 FPS and the maximum as much as 86 FPS. GTA 5 is one of our favorite games and we've decided to leave it for a dessert. With optimal graphic settings our PC has shown an average of 70 FPS, which is a great result that allows you to enjoy this legendary game. Well guys, for just $600 we managed to build a computer that handles all the cool games with a bang. We selected the best components for the price quality terms for those who are looking for an optimal budget solution. You can also watch our previous video where we collect the optimal budget setup. Write down in comments down below what kind of PC you would build for $600. Bucks. We're very interested to know your opinion. Please subscribe to the channel, put the thumbs up, see you next time.